You are listening to Backstage Pass Podcast, hosted by Hannah Chigwell and brought to you by Tom and Jane. Hello, Julia Nunes. Hello, Hannah Trigwell. Did I say it good? That's it. Yes, you said it so good. How are you? <laughs> I'm excellent. How are you? Good. I'm good. Yeah. T- to give a quick introduction to everyone on this podcast, you are an American singer-songwriter. That is a very, very brief <laughs> introduction, though. So. <laughs> so, Julia Nunes, who are you? Tell us. Tell us about yourself. Oh, let's see. Um... Well, I think it's fun now that like everyone is internet famous. I like to I like to yes. say I was one of the first. <laughs> you were. You were. I remember watching one of your videos. I feel like it was 10 years ago, you know. Yeah. It, it, it probably was, was. It was a, you were playing acoustic guitar, but it was one of the first videos I ever ever saw on YouTube. Yeah, when I first started posting videos on YouTube, there were only a few of us. Like, I, that sounds crazy to say now, but there were, like, anyone who had gotten any amount of, like, uh, praise. We all knew each other. <laughs> and I see that you've done loads of touring, and, but do you still, would you still say you're, like, an online musician, if that's a thing? <laughs> I'm an online musician. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um I, yeah, I've gone through so many phases in front of the internet, so it's um, it's really hard to classify me. I like to think of myself as like this uh, solo entity <laughs> that uh, yeah. makes music and puts it on the internet, and because people like it, I get to make a living. But it, that's the truth as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, things like uh, Kickstarter and Patreon mean that I don't have to, like, I never signed a record deal. I never um, had to do, like, crazy ads or commercials for anything. Um, Yeah. It's like a small business, and the thing I make is music. Which is amazing. I've seen that you've got a really close community of fans, and, and you did an amazing Kickstarter project, and now on Patreon... How are you finding that whole process of having a a kind of core fan group that you share exclusive content with? I love it. I love them. I feel like the conversations are almost reminiscent of how we were talking about like YouTube used to be small. It's like I actually feel like I can talk with this group of people about um, what I made, like I just redid a song from back then. Um, The song that I put out on August 1st, just earlier this month, was a a remake of a song called August that I wrote when I was 16. I'm 31 now. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, and there are people- That's awesome. Yeah, it, it sounds like completely different and the same. And like everyone who's been with me for a decade is like, you're completely different and the same. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, we just got to like talk about it in the comment section, like the way the internet um, always felt the best to me was when we would just like chat and like be passionate about things and not be afraid of like criticism or whatever. And uh, Mm. it was a weird switch to go to like um have it be like oh I need to you need to like pay this certain amount to like be in this club or whatever yeah um but it really like when I accepted that it was so much easier to talk to people because like the the internet just gets so loud and so um intense and crazy I'm, yeah like I'm a sensitive little artist and I'm like <laughs> putting out these songs like I, I think people forget that artists are like sensitive it's hard as well you know people have people have sent messages to me before being like um and I feel bad you know if someone's commented something and you haven't responded but it's impossible you would never be able to create art anymore You would not have enough time in the day to create music if you responded to everyone who commented on the stuff that's publicly available. And then it doesn't then negate the actual social part of social media. It's an endless cycle, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, I think that that's why you have to actually enjoy social media. Like, I I do enjoy yeah. it. Um, and then, like, nothing kills art faster than, like, guilt or obligation. So, yeah, I think I'm actually doing the best at it I've ever done. Like, uh, I'm putting out a song a month. And aside from that, I stay a little quiet. And it's allowed me to have, like, it's crazy to think like after 10 years, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the time that I really have figured it out. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't yeah. have it figured out until recently. Um, but one of the things that I think I figured out is that I need to work with people. I need to work with like close friends. So I have a bandmate named Chase Burnett and he's an amazing musician. He puts out his own music and uh I I work with him and I, there's no way I would be able to do it without him. Like there's places that I yeah. would get stuck and feel the like, oh, I've been working on this for so long and I don't know if I like it um, that I've always experienced. But now I can be like, well, here's what I've got. Here's the parts that I do like. And I send it off to Chase Burnett. He does some magic. Like his skill set is so complimentary to mine. So uh, it's like, more work but more fun to work with people originally I introduced you as a singer songwriter but would you would you call yourself that or do you produce your own music as well uh yeah Chase and I co-produce it I would say he does the heavy lifting cool. like like right <laughs> something I've never been good at is beats and he just like the beat like makes it for me so I say he does like 75 percent of the producing but uh yeah, I have an opinion. I, I send the chords over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do a little top line, do, 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 do. <laughs> so I recently had your manager, Emily White, on as a guest on this podcast. She's obviously written a book about how to have a sustainable career in music. She must be a great person to have on your team. Yeah, she really sorted my my stuff out. I don't. Can I swear? <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. real free. She shorted... <laughs> sorted my shit out it was uh it was kind of a mess when she when she came along and um I remember being like very overwhelmed by the process of it and she was like oh well it's very plainly laid laid out in my book (laughs) and I was like (laughs) right oh she's got it down to like a really exact like thing and she keeps it up to date too like I, I don't think a lot of people have factored in the new paradigm of like Patreon, Kickstarter, even like TikTok, Instagram, like there's, there's a lot to catch up to. Do you feel a a pressure to be across, across the board, like on it all the time? Uh, I used to, and I now like just more highly prioritize like uh, enjoying it. Cause if I don't enjoy it, then, then even any work ethic that I like get like force myself to do will die and then I'll let people down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just yeah. something like sustainable, enjoyable that actually like is what I say it's going to be. And I never, yeah. I never like fall off because I'm just like dead and tired. It's hard, isn't it? When you don't have inspiration and you're just, if you feel like you need to, or like you say, if you're obliged to write something and then you don't write something that you like and then the guilt creeps in and then, ah. But do you have things that trigger off your inspiration? Do you have things that you can ever go to and think, I know that doing this or being there is going to... I definitely know that uh, boredom <laughs> gets me. <laughs> Yes. Um, I, I've seen yeah, a few same. talks on this. Yeah, like uh, it's uh, we're so entertained by our phones and there's so much that um, takes the thinking, the job of like thinking for you. And then you don't mm-hmm. you don't create in your mind. But if I take away all of my entertainment, I I have more. Like my my brain does more thinking. And then I think that with artists, you just naturally create if you're given the space to. Like 
it, it's pretty immediate. Uh, or actually, no, I would say that there are two hours where if I take everything away from myself, there are two hours where I'm like, oh, when I get my phone back, I'm going to like order this thing that I've been meaning to order. <laughs> I'll text my mom this thing I've been meaning to say. And and like I, I like mourn the loss of my phone. So I like keep a little <laughs> list of like when I get my phone back, I'm going to do these things. And then after two hours, I'm like, my brain is so rich with ideas. <laughs> Yeah, do you have bored. a pen and paper to hand when that happens? Gotta, gotta have some some yeah. pen to paper. Yeah, or um, I, I sometimes can trust myself to turn off the Wi-Fi on my computer and, like, wipe my desktop and, uh, like, even hide the icons for the internet. Like, just hide everything and only have the music recording software, the video recording software... Like, sometimes I can trust myself because typing is so much faster. Like, and yeah, making the idea is so much more satisfying than than thinking about the idea and planning out the idea. Like, just make it. <laughs> um, but it yeah, all depends absolutely. on if you can trust yourself to not, like, go do the, the entertaining thing. <laughs> do you use uh, Logic or Ableton mm-hmm. or? Yes. Yeah, Logic. I use uh, Logic cool. and Final Cut Pro, and um, I found this editing software on an app on my phone called Leap Video that um, filters, like, it does the colors the way that I want the colors to be. Like, I, I could never color correct on Final Cut, but yeah, Leap Video, it's a, a video editing app that... Um, it has like filters that feel like they they just make it feel nice. Like I, I notice how much like higher quality my videos look when the color is nice. Nice. And since I'm putting out a video every month, like uh, this year, it'll be my ninth song this year on September first. And that's great. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. And I've just gotten better and better. Like, I, I need to like the video, right? So, like, I, mm. at some point I realized, like, I need to find <clears throat> something that does what Visco does for pictures. Because I love Instagram. I love, I do, like, love social media, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your track of the week this week? My track of the week. Can I open Spotify? Remy Wolf. Monte Carlo. And, okay. And it might be it might be a toss up between they're both Remy Wolf. There's Monte Carlo and then there's Woo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I need to check this out. Such fun music. Like she's having fun. And uh I keep Great. watching videos of hers. She's like gone fully quarantine like <laughs> all right here's what i can do in quarantine all of her music videos are her surrounded by 3d images of herself so it's like weird little claymation wow. remy wolf's dancing awkwardly the way you can program a computer to dance i love remy wolf i'm obsessed what is the best lesson that you've learned in your career so far you just have to be in the driver's seat of your career so you know you know better than anyone what your actual job and vision is yeah so never assume that someone else knows better than you solid solid answer excellent love that (laughs) well thanks so much for speaking to me uh it's been awesome to meet you like this hopefully we'll meet someday in the future and i hope you have a great week i hope you have an excellent week thank you so much thanks for tuning into this episode be sure to hit subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you think and i will see you next time on backstage pass